Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to learn how to solve algebra word problems. Today we'll begin our lesson with problem number 79. Problem, as you can see, is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it. We're being asked how much interest will be earned. How much interest will be earned if we were to invest 25 times d dollars for d number of years for d number of years at d percent per year d is some unknown quantity we don't know what it is obviously because it's an algebra problem we're going to invest 20 times that amount that number whatever d happens to be we're going to invest 25 times d dollars for d number of period at d percent per year and the question simply is at the end of the years, how much interest will we will we have earned? Let's find out, shall we? Let's begin our story by investing one hundred dollars. One hundred dollars, we know, should earn d dollars in one year. One hundred dollars should earn d dollars in one year, and how do we know that? Because it's d percent per year. If it's 3% per year, then $100 will earn $3. If it's 5% per year, then if you were to invest $100, $100 at 5% per year should earn $5. $100 invested at 7% will earn $7, and so on and so forth. Since we're investing $100 at D%, percent, it should yield D dollars. We're not investing $100, we actually want to invest 25 times D, but before we get to 25 times D, let's ask ourselves how much $1 will earn. If $100, if one hundred dollars earns d dollars, then that implies that in turn implies that if you were to invest one hundredth of the amount, one hundredth of that amount instead of hundred dollars, if you were to invest one dollar, then it should yield one hundred times one hundred the previous amount in in interest. Whatever we were earning before in in, in interest, now we will get a hundredth of that amount. Why hundredth of that amount? Because we're investing hundredth of the previous amount. Instead of hundred dollars, we're investing only one dollar. In reality, we're not investing one dollar, we're not investing one hundred dollars, we're investing twenty-five times d dollars. So if one dollar yields this much interest in one year, then two dollars should yield twice as much, three dollars should invest it at d, d percent should yield three times as much, seven dollars should yield seven times as much, and therefore we're not investing one dollars, two dollars, three dollars, seven dollars. We're investing twenty-five times three dollars, and twenty-five times three dollars should yield twenty-five times d times this amount, d over one hundred dollars. In how many years? In one year. In one year. We're not investing it for one year. We're investing it for d years. So if this is the amount we earn in interest in one year, then if we were to keep this amount for two years, we should earn twice as much. In three years, we should earn three times as much. And therefore, in D years, in D years, we should earn D times this amount. So it's 25 over 25 D, 25 D times D over 100 times D dollars is how much we will earn on the investment of 25 d dollars 25 d dollars will earn this much amount if you invest it for d years we just have to simplify this expression let's simplify it so we have 25 times d times d over 100 times d d times d times d is just d cubed and 25 we have on the top, 100 we have on the bottom, let's divide top and bottom by 25. 20, <coughs> 25 is going to go away and 100 becomes 4. There is your final answer. In a multiple choice question, in a multiple choice question, uh, if you're preparing for any of these exams that you see here, which is what I do, uh, tutoring for GRE, GMAT, TES, HESES, SAT, ACT, if something like this were to appear on this standardized exam, the final answer would simply be this, d cubed over 4. If you arrive at that answer of d cubed over 4, you shouldn't stop there, 
you should take a couple of seconds to verify your answer, make sure it is in fact the right answer and that you're not picking a sucker's answer. Maybe, maybe you made a very predictable mistake and therefore your answer happens to agree one of the one, agrees with one of the answer choices that they give you because they give you four or five answer choices. One of them is the right answer. The other three or four answer choices that they give you are the one of the most popular mis are, are the three or four most popular mistakes that people make. You want to make sure that you did not commit one of those errors. And how do you make, make sure of that? By verifying it. Plug in, plug in numbers for the variable, solve the problem arithmetically. Once you got the answers, uh, once you solve the problem arithmetically, whatever answer that you get is the same answer that this answer should yield. Let's do it. Enough of the talk. Let's do it. I need the room. We need a lot of room. So we're going to have to erase some stuff. I'm going to erase all of the things. I don't want to erase the problem itself because we're going to need the variables in a second. Actually, there are no variables. There is only one variable, D. But still, let's keep it there. I'm going to erase the work. I'm going to erase the work. Our answer is this. The question is, what do you want to invest? What do you want? To, in other words, what do you want to plug in for D? Anything you like. It really doesn't matter. I'm just going to plug in 6. And why not? And why 6? To which I have a very good answer. I have an excellent answer to that. If you were to walk up to me and ask me, why did you plug in 6? My answer would be, why the hell not? Plug in 7 if you want. Plug in 3 if you want. I really don't care what you plug in. Plug in anything you want. Solve the problem arithmetically. Get the answer and make sure that the answer that you get is the same answer that is given by this, this quantity. So, 25 times D, 25 times D, 25 times 6 dollars is what we can invest for how long? For 6 years at 6% because this is D and this is D and that's 25 times D. You see, 25 times D dollars 25 times D dollars invested for D years at D percent. Let's see what this gives us. Okay, listen carefully. 25 times 6 is 150. 25 times D is 160. Actually, I, now that I realize it, I'm making it far too complicated for no reason at all. For no reason at all. I changed my mind. I don't want to plug in 6. Let's plug in 4. Let's plug in 4 because you'll see the 4 will, four will give us less work. So we're going to pretend that we're going to plug, plug in 4. We're going to pretend that we're plugging in 25 times 4. But 20 times 5 times 4 is $100. Okay, let's think of, now it becomes very simple. $100, now it becomes very simple. $100 invested at 4% yields $4. Agree? $100 invested at 4% for one year will yield $4. We are not investing for one year, we are investing for four years, so we should get $16. Does that, does that give you 16 when you plug in D for 4? Well, let's find out. D cube over 4. D cube over 4 will simply be 4 times 4 times 4 over 4. What do you know? It does give us 16. It does give us 16. It's the right answer. Let's do one more, shall we? Let's do one more. Number 80. Problem number. 80. Problem number 80 has nothing to do with investment, has nothing to do with money. It says, how far can Michael walk? How far can Michael walk in 40 minutes? How far can he go in 40 minutes if he walks k kilometers in each hour. If you like, you can solve it yourself. You can solve it yourself and then see if your answer agrees with the answer that we're going to get together. Let's begin the process. So what do we know? We know that he walks k kilometers in each hour. The question is, is this how we're going to start our work? K kilometers in each hour? If you start, listen very carefully, okay? If we start out by writing K kilometers in each hour, the hour is going to end up here on this side of the board. What is the question asking? How far? How far? That's the question. This is what we're looking for. We're looking for distance. Therefore, it's a good idea to put a distance on this side. 
the problem the, the, the word problem that you that we set up that you're going to see here in the equation the big difference is that when we're solving the equations listen very carefully when you're solving the equations tradition dictates convention dictates that we always put our unknown on the right hand side or rather on the left hand side we put our unknown here we put we put it like this x equals 5 plus 3 something like this algebra word problem whatever it is that you're solving for always bring that to the other side to the right hand side. So instead of writing k kilometers in h hour, we're going to say it takes, we're going to say it takes h hour for k kilometers. The question is asking how far can you walk in 40 minutes? See, they're asking in terms of minutes. The units that they're using is minutes. So we need to convert these hours into minutes. It, it takes h hours for k kilometers. If it takes h hours for k kilometers, that tells us that in one it, 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 it tells us that in one in one hour we should be able to walk k over h kilometers. But again, it's still an, it's still one hour. In one hour we can watch walk k kilometers. We are walking for 40 minutes. How much is 40 minutes in terms of hours? How do we express 40 minutes into hours? 40 minutes is two-third of an hour because there are 60 minutes in an hour. So that tells us that, that it takes 40... If, if in one hour we can walk that much, okay, I'm making, I'm making too far, too much first. This is two-third of an hour. That's what I'm trying to say here. This is two-third of an hour. We need to convert this minute into hour. That's what it is. So in one hour we can walk this much in two hours, we'll walk twice as much, twice as far. In five hours, we'll walk five times as far. Therefore, in two third of an hour, in two third of an hour, two third of an hour, which is the 40 minutes, we should be able to walk this amount, k over h times two third kilometers. We can't leave it like this. This looks ugly. k over h times two third is, is to be written as is going to be written as 2 times k, 2k over 3h kilometers. And that's our final answer. That's our final answer. And again, if you want to verify it, you can verify it. It's not a big deal. Quickly, it will verify it. So let's decide what you want to plug in here. How fast do you want to walk? Let's walk, let's walk 6 kilometers in 2 hours. Okay, let's walk 6 kilometers in 2 hours and watch what happens. If you're walking six kilometers in two hours, you're walking three kilometers every hour. Three kilometers, three kilometers every hour. That's your speed. That implies that implies that you're walking one kilometer. You're walking one kilometer in one third of an hour, isn't it? If you're walking three kilometers per hour, one kilometer should take a third of an hour. Therefore, in two in two third of an hour, you should walk two kilometers. Two kilometers in two-third of an hour. That's your answer. Two kilometers is the answer. Does that give you two kilometers? Does, it, does, this, does, this exp does this quantity work out to be two? If it works out to be two, then it's the right answer. Let's substitute the numbers that we plugged in here. I'm going to switch. One more time. How do we arrive at two? Very quickly. We're pretending that we're walking six kilometers in two hours. If you're walking six kilometers in two hours, what you're essentially telling me is that you're walking three kilometers every hour. If you're walking three kilometers every hour, you're walking one kilometers, one kilometer rather, not kilometers, one kilometer you're walking in every 20 minutes. Since you're walking for 40 minutes, you must be able to, you should have gone, you should be able to go two kilometers. That's your answer, two kilometers. At this speed, the person will walk two kilometers in 40 minutes. Does that give you two kilometers? Let's find out. Two times k, what do we plug in for k? Six. Two times k over 3 times h. What do we plug in for h? 2. Remember, we're looking for 2. 2 is the answer. Let's see what we can do here. I see, I see 3 times 3 times 2. I see 3 times 2 at the bottom. 3 times 2 is 6. And 6 cancels out with 6 and it gives us 2. Voila. Which is exactly, which is exactly what, we, what we had claimed that it should work out to be person should be able to walk two kilometers in 40 minutes because he's, walk, he's taking 20 minutes to walk one kilometer. I know.